Welcome back to, um, and welcome to A Picture Paints A Thousand Words with me, James Holland, and with Al Murray. And it's Al's turn today. Al, what have you got? Well, I have a picture of a, sh a Sherman tank, a, a British Sherman tank, um, so an M4A4, um, taken at Nijmegen um, uh, in uh, 1944, late 1944. Um, and uh, you can see it's covered in graffiti. Gein cigarette, cigaretta. Now, um, I, the thing is, is I, don't, I, I don't know anything about this image. I just love it, right? I, I know where it was taken. I, I just love it because you've got all, all these things going on. That, that graffiti is surely the locals writing on the tank as it straw as it as it um, grows through a new a freshly liberated dutch town or settlement and so what you've got is the sense here of uh, the british army on the move liberating the sort of um civilian army aspect you know you i expect you know that um uh, uh uh that kind of graffiti on a tank isn't exactly regulation isn't exactly the sort of thing that would be approved of by a strict regimental sergeant major or whatever but there it is and also you see the Sherman um, uh, uh, festooned with guys kit, the personalization of the tank. A tank after all um, uh, has uh, five guys in this M4A4. And of course the M4A4 is the, the petrol pad, slightly longer chassis um, variant that the British took or the, or the, the Mark III Sherman that the, or, or Mark V rather that the British took from the Americans that we settled on the petrol powered one eventually. And that's an example of this with the applique armor in three different places on its side. So there's a, a piece to the rear, um, a, a piece to the front to cover the uh, radio operated machine gunner. And then there's a piece to cover the tank commander actually applique to the to the um, turret. So you see the Sherman in its full glory here, super mobile, liberating, but also there's the, you know, the crew um, know the drawbacks of the vehicle because they've had to add armor to it because they're not entirely sure that it's adequately armored enough. Yeah, but it also and it really does say, doesn't it, that these are, you know, these are people who would not be wearing a uniform and driving a tank were it not for the Second World War. These are yeah. not pre-war regulars. And presumably yeah. all that graffiti is done with chalk, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's surely chalk. It's surely chalk. And of course, cigarettes featuring because because let's not let's not forget the Second World War is a smoker's war. And uh, the, the, all the armies are propelled by, you know, with a giant cloud of fag smoke above them as they as they enter enter Holland. Of course, in liberated Europe, it's a currency, the cigarettes that the Allies bring with them. And I, 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 I love the stowage on this. You can see everything that's going on, the ammo, the old ammo boxes, the, the jerry can, the helmets and, and all this stuff. But at, exactly right, as you say, James, these people, were it not for the Second World War, would not be for one million, wouldn't, wouldn't go near an army if they could possibly help it. Yet here they are um, it, and it, living in their little mobile combat home, as it were.